is Ted LeClaire. He's a freshman. Most of the group smiled and a handful called out a greeting to him. The two, the two closest to him held out a hand and he shook them. An older guy hopped off the trunk of a car and walked towards him, and the crowd parted. Theo Theodore LeClaire, nice to finally meet you, he said. I'm George Haney. <coughs> Ted, the boy said. He reached out to shake George's hand. Just Ted. George smiled and they shook. The boy noticed that his hand was small for his age and his handshake a bit weak. George was also somewhat pear-shaped. He had narrow shoulders and wider hips. How's school treating you, George asked. Fine. Anyone giving you any trouble? The boy shook his head. There was something to the way George spoke. He looked at the boy, he looked the boy in the eye and patiently, <laughs> patiently waited at the end of each question. The boy felt as though his answers mattered. He likes guns, Peckerhead called out from the other side of the group. I told him you'd show him. I didn't say that, said the boy. You don't have to be ashamed. George said it slowly and shook his head. His demeanor was calming to the boy. We're all red-blooded Americans here. We like guns, too. He smiled, and the boy smiled back. I have to work for a couple hours at my mother's shop, George said. There won't be many customers. If you'd like to come along, we can chat, and I can give you a ride home when I get off. The boy shrugged. You'll be home for dinner, George said. Come on. He was easy to listen to, and the boy followed him through the crowd to his Ford sedan. The store was small just an addition off their single-story ranch house. The sign out front read, Vera's Pantry, guns, ammo, knives, hunting accessories, and home protection. He followed George across the dirt parking lot. It was uneven and rutted out. An electric chime rang as George opened the front door. His mother sat behind the register reading a magazine. Behind her stood a vertical row of at least 30 rifles and shotguns. Above them, on the wall, hung what looked to be an M16, an AK-47, and two other assault rifles the boy didn't recognize. In front of her was a long glass display case full of handguns and knives. When they got close, she looked down at her watch and shook her head. She was a big woman with short gray hair, but when she shook her head, the boy saw that it was still long in the back. Would it kill you to get here on time, she said. I have school, mother, George said. Don't give me that. You can go now, he told her. I know what I can and can't do, she said. Don't get lippy with me just because one of your little peckerwood friends is here. I'm sorry, mother. I told you not to give me that tone. Fine, he said. Just leave. The boy was startled by the jump in George's voice. He had walked down one of the aisles toward the back of the store to get away from the argument. George's mother shook her head, and the floor creaked as she walked across the room, and he heard the door that led into their house open and shut. I apologize for that, George said. It's nothing. I find it very embarrassing. Don't, said the boy. She doesn't agree with my attempts to better myself. She says it's bad for business, if you can believe that, George said. It kills her that we're going under. I'm sure you've noticed our, noticed our lack of inventory. The boy had noticed the sparsely stocked shelves, but he shrugged as if he didn't. You're kind, but the truth is that we've lost our credit with most of our suppliers. My dad had to move to find work, the boy said. He walked over to the glass case and peered in at the selection of handguns. George went behind the counter and stood across from him. The boy was fascinated by the revolvers. He loved the exposure of their firing mechanisms. The newer semi-automatics tucked away their moving parts, but with the revolvers, it was all there to be seen. George unlocked the case and reached inside. Hold this one, he said. George pushed a pistol into the boy's hand. That's German design and German manufacture. It's heavy. it's heavy, the boy said. It's partly the age of the piece, the lack of materials technology that we have today, but it's also due to the exceptional cal caliber of the round. George set a large bullet on the glass counter. That, Ted, would do considerable. He was interrupted by the electric chime on the front door. Another teenager stepped into the shop. The first thing the boy noticed was, was his shaved head. What's up, the other boy said, throwing a casual salute-like greeting at George. Jason, George said, 